Today, let me show you one of Lightroom's most underrated tool for color grading, the calibration panel. One of the reasons this tool might be so underrated is because it's hidden all the way down in the panels menu. But don't let its placement in Lightroom give you a false opinion. Although it seems strange and complex at first, it helps tremendously getting better colors. Actually, this tool isn't meant for color grading purposes. As the name suggests, it's designed to calibrate the RAW files coming out of your camera. This is because RAW files from different brands all have slightly different colors to it, since they interpret the incoming signals different, and the results are non-identical colors. That's the reason some people, for example, prefer Canon over Sony colors. However, this doesn't mean we can't use calibration in a creative way. Let's go through this panel step by step. In the process drop-down menu, you can simply select the version Lightroom uses to convert the data. The default is always set to the newest version, which is the best option for you. I would suggest to just ignore this menu. The tint slider helps you to neutralize the color cast. If the shadows in your shot are a bit too greenish, try erasing the slider. Just like in this image, we can see a very very subtle green color cast in the shadows, so I'm going to pump up the tint very slightly and just give a more natural warm color tone to the whole image. And if the shadows are more on the magenta side, simply bring down the tint slider. This is pretty similar to the tint slider in the white balance menu, which I personally prefer to correct color casts. Now on to the good stuff, the red, green and blue primary options. These are the most vital calibration tools and the ones I use on most of my images. These options come with two sliders each, the hue and the saturation. But other than hue and saturation in the HSL panel, these not only change a specific color range, but rather every pixel. What this means, if I go into the HSL menu and change the hue of the blue color tones, only the sky will be affected as you can see if I push this slider around. But if I change the blue primary hue, not only will the blue areas change, but every color, every pixel that includes the tiniest bit of blue. So pushing the hue will affect the whole image, as you can see when pushing this slider around. The same goes for the saturation slider. Bringing it up will affect every single color with blue in it. And since most of the colors include blue, the whole image will change instead of just a portion. Again, I do want to point out the purpose of this tool is to correct color of the raw file. So ideally, the calibration is the first thing used after opening the image in Lightroom. But I personally use it as the last step of my color grading process, since my goal is not to correct colors, but to be creative with them. As it's hard to predict the outcome of the adjustments done to these sliders, usually I start by bringing down the blue primary hue. You can see how this will add a very cool looking cyan color tone to the sky while also giving the foliage some more red tones and thus this just works great with sunset images in my opinion. So let's bring it down a bit further and at the same time I do want to bring up the colors in the image so I'm going to boost the saturation of the blue primaries. We can raise it quite a bit, that looks really really good. And then I go play around with red and green until I get a satisfying result. In this case I decided to bring up the green primary hue. I'm also going to bring up the saturation again. And for red I want to bring the hue down a notch. And also bring down the saturation. So turning off the calibration adjustments you will see the difference. Before the image looked kind of okay, but the green color cast is now very very obvious after turning off those calibration adjustments. Also, the colors aren't really that fitting for a sunset image. Turning back on the calibration you can see the warm tones are much more frequent now. And especially taking a look at that cabin in the center, 
we do have some more natural color tones with a stronger reds in here. So after all, you can see the calibration options can have a huge impact on the image. Again, those sliders aren't that intuitive, so I would suggest take a ton of images and just play around with them until you get a feeling for what they are doing to it. I hope this video was able to share some useful information on the calibration panel. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.